Good day, culinarians. Today we're going to uh, work on chapter eight, chapter eight, which is stocks. So we're going to do chapter eight stocks today for our lecture. Uh, keep in mind, if you're going to uh, follow this, follow this with your book. Okay, I'm going to be pulling stuff out of these your uh, culinary book here. So if you want to take notes, take notes. If you want to highlight in your book, highlight in your book. But I'm going to be taking stuff out of these chapters. And that's going to be on your test, your written test. So your written test is going to be stuff I'm going to be talking about and going over with in this chapter. All right. For your final exam, keep in mind to sit all your tests because your final exam is going to be based off of all the tests you've taken. So your tests are going to be your study guide for your final exam. So starting out, chapter eight, stocks. If you have any questions, Shoot me an email with your questions. I'll try to answer them best I can. Or write down your questions when you come to class. Ask me the questions in, in class, and I'll try to answer them at that point. Okay? So, page 159, Stocks, Chapter 8. Um, get into uh, the, the, the whole process of stocks in the restaurant industry. It says here in the book, Modern Kitchens, stocks have lost most of the importance they once had in the first place. Increased reliance on portion control meats has made bones for stocks uh, rarity in the most uh, prestigious establishments. Second, making stocks require extra labor, which most restaurants today aren't able to provide. Finally, more food today is served without sauces, so stocks are needed to make the uh, necessary sauces. Uh, nonetheless, the um, finest cuisines still depend on soups and sauces based on high quality stocks. Okay, so keep that in mind. A lot of places aren't using stocks anymore. When you come into the kitchen, if you go in the walk in cooler, left hand side, as soon as you walk in, you'll have these uh, minor bases. The minor bases um, pretty much are what people are using nowadays instead of making their own stocks. A um, little bit high in salt. But if you use them right, they can make a very good stock for yourself. So minor bases, they're in the walk-in cooler if you want to check it out, uh, see what they look like. Um, so for stocks, uh, page 160, um, for your ingredients and stocks, preparation of stocks um, has simplified over the years from Esca uh, Escoffier to uh, what people uh, perceive as stocks nowadays. So things have changed over the years. Um, a stock, definition of a stock. A stock may be defined as a clear, thin, and unthickened liquid. Okay, whatever flavor you use, and that would be the stock, whether it be beef, chicken, fish, vegetable, veal, whatever it is. So it's an unclear, uh, thin, unthickened uh, liquid. Bones. Uh, when you're making stock, bones is a key uh, key part of making stock, except for when you're making vegetable stock. Um, you got chicken stock, white stock, brown stock, fish stock, lamb, game, turkey stock, so all kinds of specialty stocks that you can make. Um, when in, uh, making stock, a couple things to keep in mind. You got your um, your your cartilage cartilage in your, your bones and your stock is, is one of the key ingredients in there best sort of gelatin in bones younger animals have lots of cartilage in their skeletons um, if you're making beef stock you want to get those young bones with some really good marrow in it um, if you're making chicken stock the younger chickens are the best um, but you want to use some sort of uh, a bone where it has that marrow in there um, meats if you're using the uh, just meat. To make a stock, it's not a stock, it's a broth. Okay, broth is made from meat. Stock is made from bones. Um, when you're making your stock, page 161, you're going to use a mirepoix. A mirepoix. Okay, mirepoix is basically, you know, onions, carrots, and celery. Okay. On page 161, it's a little chart uh, for mirepoix. You've got your uh, onions, celery, carrots, um, Eight ounces of onion, four ounces of celery, four ounces of carrots. If you're going to use a white mirepoix, a white mirepoix, you're going to substitute uh, parsnips or leeks, parsnips and leeks maybe, for your carrots. Okay, 
Because a white Mirapois, you can't use the carrots because you can get some color out of it. So a white Mirapois, usually going to use uh, parsnips. Um, when making some stocks, you want to uh, put some sort of acid in there. If you're going to use an acid tomato product or uh, wine to be used for an acid, usually you use those when you're making your darker stocks. Um, page 162, seasoning and spices for your stocks. Um, what you're going to do is make a sash. Um, when you come into the kitchen, I'll have you guys make some chicken stock. Chicken stock, you're going to make that sash. Um, in that sash, you're going to put uh, thyme, bay leaves, peppercorns, parsley, parsley stems in there. Um, in the book here, they talk about putting garlic cloves, garlic or cloves in there. Um, this is optional. Whenever I make stock, I don't put cloves or garlic in there because clove and garlic has such a strong uh, flavor to it. And you want to try to keep these stocks as neutral as possible because you want to use them for various uh, uh, items. Um, for example, if you're making a chicken stock, okay, to make a chicken stock, what happens if you throw some cloves in there? And now you're going to make a, a, a sauce. So you want to make an a, a avocado soup. Okay, you make an avocado soup using chicken broth. That clove in there is going to be a little too strong for, for that. So you want to keep the stock as neutral as possible. That's why I only use thyme, uh, bay leaves, peppercorns, and parsley uh, when I make the stock. Put that in the satch, throw that in there. Uh, different things, you can, uh, page 162, they show a, a charred onion in your stock. You take an onion, cut it, char it on the broiler, throw it in there, and that'll give it a nice charred flavor in your stock. Uh, Nice smoky flavor in your stock. Page 162 at the bottom, usually the proportions of your uh, stock mixture, about 80% bones, 10% mirepoix, and then of course 100% of water in there, cold water. Whenever you're making stock, you always want to start out with cold water. So when you start out with uh, cold water in the stock, as it heats up, that, that, that cold water help pull all the flavor out of the bones, out of the vegetables. So you always want to start out with cold water to help pull all the flavoring out of there. Um, page 163, they have examples of different uh, tables for making white stock, uh, a white stock with beef or veal, uh, brown stock, fish stock. Page 164, getting different procedures. Uh, blanching the bones, a lot of chefs will blanch off the bones, uh, run them underneath some sort of water, blanch them off. Um, seizure for blanching your bones, page 164, rinse bones in clear water. Okay, rinse them in clear water, wash off the bone and some of the impurities of the product. Um, place the bones in a, in a stock pot, fill with cold water, um, bring the water to a boil, then reduce down to a simmer. Okay. Uh, drain the bones well, and usually when uh, we drain them, when we do it in class here, we'll run it through a, a china cap first. Once we get it through a china cap, we'll run it through a chamois, and the chamois will have some cheesecloth in it. That way we get a nice clear liquid um, for our stocks. Page 165, talk about preparing white stocks. Um, pretty much a 13-step process there for preparing your stock from a um, cutting the bones to rinsing the bones. Uh, a lot of times, instead of rinsing the bones, what I'll do is I'll roast them. That way it'll give it a little bit more flavor, whether it be chicken or beef, just roast them off instead of rinsing them. That way it really enhances the flavor instead of washing off some of the flavor. Um, simmering the bones, um, page 165, number nine there, simmering recommend length of time for, for making stock. Beef bones, eight to 10 hours. Veal bones, six to eight hours. Chicken bones, three to four hours. Um, fish bones, 30 to 45 minutes. When you guys make your chicken stock in class, we'll, we'll let it simmer probably about three hours before you pull it off. Um, when the stock is finished and you pull it off and cool it down, cool it down as quick as possible. Uh, keep it in the uh, walk-in cooler. If you're gonna keep it in the walk-in cooler, the stock will keep fresh for two to three days. Two to three days in the walking cooler to stay fresh for you. Um, page 166, 167, they get into making stocks. Uh, 167 shows uh, roasting off your bones for beef stock. 
roasting off your vegetables, you know, deglaze the uh, bottom of the uh, roasting pan to get all those little drippings off there. Put that in the, uh, the stock. Uh, 168 and get into basic brown stock, uh, veal bones, beef bones, uh, like I said, beef bones, if you make beef stock, typically, you know, eight to 10 hours to make the beef stock. Um, preparing fish stock, um, same thing, you want to use, usually you get skeletons, bones, so if you're using a whole fish in your restaurant, and you're breaking them down, you're going to use that uh, the skeleton structure that's left over, skeleton head, throw that all in there and make your stock out of that. Um, usually, typically, when you make fish stock, you want to use some sort of lean, lean fish, lean fish, lean bones. Page 170, get into a vegetable stock, use the same mirepoix, throw in some leeks, mushrooms, turnips, fennel, garlic, tomatoes, have your satch, all kinds of stuff in there, you know, just lots of vegetables in there, make your stock simmer, a good 45 minutes, a good simmer on that, make some good stock for you. Um, page 172, uh, 172, they get into reductions and glazes, you know, reduction and glaze um, for stocks. Stocks are concentrated by boiling, simmering, evaporating part of water, it's called a reduction. So when you get your, your stock, and you cook it off, you strain it, you got all your liquid there, and you start cooking it off, reducing, get rid of some of that, that liquid in there. That's your reduction. You're reducing that stock. You give it more flavor, stronger flavor. Um, glaze, glaze is a French term. Stock reduced until it coats the back of a spoon. Okay, so when you get your, your stock, you reduce it down so it gets real thick, coats the back of food spoon. That's what's called a glaze. Okay, glaze. Um, page 172, preparing for a glaze, reduce stock uh, with moderate heat, uh, skim the surface, get all the impurities off the surface. Um, we're going to reduce to half or two thirds, strain into something smaller. So you want to reduce that down and become really thick on you. Uh, different types of glaze, you got your meat glaze, uh, chicken glaze, fish glaze, uh, the poussin, the velouté, the, the vandine. Um, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, so you got the three different types of glazes that they talk about in your book on page 172, kinds of glazes, okay? That's it for stocks. Uh, you guys can be able to test on this when you come back into class. So any questions, shoot me an email, write them down, bring them to class, and ask for them in class. I'll answer them the best I can. All right, thank you.